So between the first couple of videos that I did basically in one session and now, I forgot that I actually had a screen capturing program on my laptop that I could use so that you can see the screen better uh, as opposed to trying to read that video off of glass, which doesn't really have that great color correction. So I'm have that going to do a bunch of post stuff basically in order to make it so that you can see better what it is that I'm actually seeing on the screen and go back and forth between what it is that I'm doing with glass and with the, this leap motion device and what's actually happening. So this is that leap motion max patch that I was talking about before. And I'm just going to set this on right now. And again, the visualization of what it is that kind of happens here as relates to my motion then translates to the stuff that's happening on the screen with these, uh, I'll use some mouse clicks here. Basically, this is the area that is tracking the individual finger move motion. This is the area that was tracking a bunch of different, all the variables that relate to X, Y, Z position, direction, velocity, all that kind of stuff. And so what I've done now also is um, these five things here, call frame, call hands, call fingers, call palms, and call balls are all called collectives, which basically takes all of the data that's coming in from the leap motion and routes that into lists. And that's the lists then get routed to this area where that data happens as relates to this metronome here. What I've done is I've also taken that information and I've unpacked it um, into its individual elements. I've taken the palm one in particular and I'm taking those numbers and I'm floating that out into individual number boxes so that I can manipulate them and do what it is that I need to with that. So I started with that, basically just grabbing the individual data. The next thing was this object I picked up from online to experiment a little bit with it is called grain stretch. The grain stretching, grain clouds are basically taking an audio file and splicing it up into really fine pieces, into grains. And this particular object does some great stuff to take something, take a sample audio file, basically. And you can do a lot of interesting things with it in real time. Like I can take this pitch here, and I can increase the pitch without increasing the speed, or decrease the pitch without changing the speed. Or I can also decrease the speed or increase the speed without changing the pitch. And there's some other interesting things too that it can do. There's this great uh, substreaming example thing here where basically if I set this example, oh, I'd already had this set up, but if the pitch is set to be at one, then you get both of these signals here that are at the same pitch. But then you can drop the pitch or raise the pitch and in real time take a signal and change it and have that come back spit out with a modified pitch in real time. And also mix that signal however it is that you want. Here's the original signal. Here is the modified signal, which is pretty cool. Now, going back to the original example here, let's put this back at the regular speed and at the regular pitch. The other thing that you can do is you can take this and say, I want to grab this from any position in the file and start from there. So if I take this from here, it basically just grabs it. If I type in a number, let's type in a number here. So I'm going to say 500. It's going to jump to that position defined by milliseconds within that file. And here's the playback basically of what position that is. So I know that this file is approximately 
three seconds, um, 3,000, I'm sorry, 3,000 milliseconds long, basically. And so what I did then was I took the, these, this data from the Y data, which is basically the up and down data of the leap motion, and I routed that to this outlet right here, which then translates to this outlet, so that when I turn on this gate, then I now have the ability, using the X and the Y thing here, to start anywhere within the sample and go to where I want it to. And basically, I'm taking the data and I'm multiplying it by 4 because I just did the math on where the top end of that Y plane was. And it's finding its position, finding its position from that. Now, I can also, if I take this speed and I reduce the speed to zero, we can also go backwards, by the way, if you can't tell from me going to negative values. If I put it at zero, basically it's going to stop at the point wherever it is in the sample. And then, if I take it here. I have a virtual control over any aspect of that audio file going up and down. And control, here's the beginning of the file. Here's the middle of the file. Oh, lost it. And anywhere within that plane now, I can basically travel anywhere within that. And then I can turn that off and put the speed back to one or something more reasonable and I've got it back. I can turn the gate on again and again right now it's just tracking the beginning of where it is I want to go if I have the speed set at one so I can basically jump into anywhere and say I want you to start in that spot And so long as I exit the field, then it's going to basically start in that spot. Or, again, if I take this into zero, now, wherever it is that I enter the field in that Y plane, it's going to play that from there. And there's a lot of interesting things that can be done with that that I've got to figure out. But this is, again, this doesn't actually exactly apply to how it is that I want to use it in the piece, but it, it kind of does, which is the reason that I grabbed the grain stretch object in the first place, because part of what it is that I'm trying to do with this, part of what it is I'm trying to do with this piece is taking certain sounds and finding ways to stop them in the middle, but still have them play and hold on to the pitches that are there. So this is a good starting point, hopefully, I can fine-tune this a little bit, learn a little bit more about these objects, learn a little bit more about how I can control this stuff a little bit better and more precisely, and that'll be a good starting point for what it is I want to do with the piece overall.